Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Maria De Simone. I'm a professional astrologer and you can find out more about me and my work at my website, insightfulastrology.com, where I offer personal consultations and I have an entire astrology school filled with classes at every level of astrology that you can sign up for and take with my personalized instruction. This month, for March, I am going to talk to you, Aries, about something that I don't often talk about. It is the asteroid Chiron. And for those of you who are students of mine or have clients of mine, you know that I don't typically dwell on Chiron. I'm not, uh, I'm a purist astrologer. I feel like you could see everything that you need to see in those main planets and the major aspects and everything else is just like gravy. It's extra information. Having said that, I do believe that Chiron is a worthwhile point in astrology to look at, especially for its deep psychological significance. And Chiron is known as the wounded healer. Okay. You may have heard of this symbolically. This is the wound in your chart that you will always have, but you use that wound in order to heal others and then heal yourself in the process as much as possible. But the thing with Chiron is that the wound never really heals. It is always there. You become a healer because of that wound that you have, but you can never cure the wound. You're always going to have it. Okay, so think of it as, you know, somebody who is a, a quadriplegic. That is a wound that the person will have forever. And yet that person who's a quadriplegic is doing TED Talks and inspiring others in so many ways. That's an example of using the wound that you have in your own body, in your own psyche, in your own life as fuel to help heal others. And in some small way, that's actually very big on an internal level, as you heal other people, it makes that wound tolerable. It makes that wound almost worth it, almost worthwhile. That's how I look at Chiron. Let me know in the comments how you guys view Chiron. Now, Chiron has an orbit of about 50.7 years, meaning it takes just under 51 years to go around the zodiac completely. And you were all born with Chiron in a specific sign. I don't know what sign your Chiron is in. You're not my client. So you may or may not have Chiron in Aries. But if you are an Aries rising or an Aries sun sign, and you're watching this forecast, this information will be relevant to you because Chiron is currently transiting through the sign of Aries and has been since, I think it's uh, around May, 2018. And Chiron will remain in Aries until about July of 2026. And the reason why I'm bringing it up now is because Chiron's getting a lot of attention by astrologers. And this is because Chiron is conjunct the North Node of Destiny, which is also in your sign. That conjunction, actually, by the time you watch this forecast, it would have peaked. It, it actually is peaking late February. I believe it's February 20th-ish. But that conjunction is active in the month of March. And that conjunction is connected to the next couple of months of life for Aries in a profound way because it all leads up to this April 8th solar eclipse in Aries. And these three celestial events, happenings, points, are all really close together. So think of it as this procession of significant karmic Aries energy that really opens up the very, very end of February, but you are feeling it in March, my friends. And so I want to talk to you about this because this is the meat and potatoes, I think, for Aries in the month of March. Now, I happen to be Aries rising, as many of you know, and I was also born with Chiron in Aries. So 
I happen to have Chiron at the degree of my ascendant in Aries. You may not, but I think this makes me uniquely qualified to talk about this particular transit, this particular energy that's happening now in the sky. And with Chiron in Aries transiting, all of us are working through a very deep wound connected to identity, connected to the sense of self. And having the transit for you guys of Chiron and Aries going over your sun sign or your ascendant, whatever it is for you, is symbolically speaking to that trigger of being called to your destiny now and focusing so much more on that self-care. And it is by addressing whatever feelings of anger or shame or guilt that you may have connected to being who you truly are meant to be that Chiron is asking you to, to deal with right now. And with the North Node in Aries as well, this is a faded time in your life and your life's journey to address this particular theme in your life. So it is a time where Aries especially, if you are not being true to yourself, it's really going to hurt. It's like, it's like somebody's taking that knife that's already in your heart and twisting it and twisting it and twisting it. So you have no choice but to be true to yourself, no matter how painful that might feel, because that is the very wound. It is the wound of expressing your unique identity in a radically not apologetic manner. You have to be sovereign. And Chiron and the North Node are all are working together and coming to that culminating point that you'll see in April connected to you will finally have that bravery to push and be who you know you're meant to be in this lifetime. And I, I don't want to underestimate this because I know it almost sounds like I'm, uh, I'm just giving one of those pep talk speeches, but you have to understand the karmic significance of this. The North Node, the Eclipse, Chiron, all working together this is destined for you. You are going to be working through something that is going to radically change your life and your life path in a way that makes you fully understand and appreciate who you really are, who you're meant to be, and you're just going to move forward and go for it. And this month is an important turning point. Now, I will also mention for you that as the month ends, eclipse season opens up. And on March 25th, we are getting a lunar eclipse at about five degrees of Libra. Let me look at the chart really quick. Uh, this eclipse, sorry guys, uh, I don't have the eclipse. I thought I had it. Yes, I do. Never mind. It's five degrees of Libra. I was right the first time. So this eclipse occurs on March 25th and that eclipse is actually a beautiful eclipse, even though it is a south node eclipse because the moon in Libra is going to be next to the south node. The reason why this is such a beautiful eclipse is because it's making a perfect trine to Pluto in Aquarius. And Pluto is now in your 11th house of hopes, wishes, dreams, alliances. But this lunar eclipse is there with the South Node in your partnership sector. And it is saying one of two things. 
You are either letting go of an outworn partnership in order to finally be empowered and pursue the partnership dynamic of your dreams that you really are aspiring to achieve. Or you, if you're in a relationship and that relationship is overall positive for you, it could be letting go of some patterns. It could be you and your partner completely shedding something about your connection that was disempowering the relationship in order to strengthen it. This doesn't have to be the ending of a relationship for every Aries, so I don't want you to think that. Even though it's a South Node eclipse, it doesn't mean that you're going to lose the relationship. You're going to lose patterns that were not serving the relationship if the relationship is otherwise positive. And if you are single, these eclipses that are occurring in your seventh house with the South Node don't automatically mean that you will not have a relationship at all for the whole series of time that this is happening. You have to look at the whole birth chart holistically. And I have many clients with Aries rising who I have been predicting actual new relationships forming for them because of other indicators in their chart connected to these eclipses. So I don't know that for you. I'm not looking at your personal birth chart. In general, just know that it's not an either or situation. It is very nuanced. And the big theme here is letting go of relationship patterns that aren't serving you so that you can move towards your most authentic self-expression. And the relationship that you have or that you enter into must honor you and your identity as an individual. This may also be a partnership change for you in business. And some of you Aries or Aries Risings out there are going to let go of a business partnership because you will feel more empowered by shedding that, by releasing that. And this, I think, is where a lot of the loss may happen. It could very well be more in business, whether it's a client or a business partner. And, and I'm thinking about this, this uh, theme in my own life of being at the point in my career where I absolutely refuse to work with people who I don't respect, who I don't like. And because you are Aries rising or an Aries sun, I think a lot of you are, are relating to what I just said because the South Node will be in your partnership sector. Now, I mean that in my personal life as well, but it's active right now in business for me. So this eclipse for you guys, for some of you, it could be letting go of a business alliance. That is one where you just no longer respect the person or the situation, it's not serving you. And when you do that, because this eclipse is trying Pluto in your 11th house, it's actually going to open up a door to new alliances and connections that really do serve you. So Aries, this was a mouthful for your astrological insights for March. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know how this energy is reflecting in your life in the comments below. And if you want to connect with me during a personal consultation, you know where to find me. The link is in the description box below to my website. Have a great month. Bye.